Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this blinking eye animation in Procreate. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to create this canvas that I created is the A4 canvas and I just flipped it on its side so that it was horizontal. And I'm going to select, I like to draw with the uh, tinderbox liner, so I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to draw a generic eye shape, well, generic in my style, I suppose. Let's, am I going to, and I'm actually going to start over on this side of the canvas, even though I'm only going to draw one eye at a time. And I will explain why in just a second. So I'm going to draw it, and then I'll probably have to uh, resize it. And I'm not going to be speeding this up at all so that you can see how long it actually takes because it actually doesn't take all that much time. That is if I could decide on a shape that I wanted for this eye. So I'm going to start with just the corner this is the inner corner of the eye. And this one I'm not going to worry too, too much about it being like perfect or smooth or polished or anything like that. I'm just going to, whoops, kind of go with the flow and draw what for me is a generic eye shape. Obviously it just depends on your style, but this is the way that I would draw the eye. Drawing the tear ducts right now. Okay, and once I'm done with that portion of it, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to draw the upper eyelid crease. And I'm going to keep that on a separate layer and I will explain why in just a second. I'm not a fan of the way that this corner kind of curves up, so I'm going to curve it down a little bit. Okay. So now I've got just the general shape of an eye, and I'm going to create one more layer between the upper eyelid crease and the shape, and I am going to draw the iris and the pupil. Actually, I'll draw the iris, make sure that it is in the area that I want it to be in, and that it is the size I want it to be. And then I'll duplicate it and resize for the pupil. Maybe. There we go. All right, so let's merge that down. So now the pupil and the iris are all in one layer and that's a race what wouldn't be seen because it would be covered by the eyelid. Okay, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. What layer is that on? There we go. And I'm going to redraw this uh, pupil with the syrup brush. And the reason for this is because the tinderbox brush has a little bit of a transparent texture. So if I was to do the color fill within that, it wouldn't count as an enclosed shape and it would just fill the whole screen. But the syrup brush is a solid brush. So when you create an enclosed shape and then you use the color fill, it will just color that shape. Okay, so now, happy with that. And the last thing for, whoops, for this eye is going to be the like mascara and um, eyelashes. I like to do on a lot of my eyes. I like to do like a, a winged eyeliner look. So we're gonna do that. And much like real life, getting the perfect winged eyeliner is kind of a process. 
All right. And I'm just going to go with relatively understated and simple for this particular drawing. Again, for the sake of trying to make the demo relatively short. Okay, that should be fillable now. There we go. Oops. Okay. And now I'm going to use the same brush to create a few eyelashes. I'm not going to get too crazy on the eyelashes. I can spend a lot of time filling in eyelashes because I actually enjoy doing it, but for this particular piece, I'm going to try and restrain myself. But I do still need some eyelashes. I think that they're actually important for the effect of the uh, end animation, so. And it also, of course, depends on like what kind of eye you're drawing. If you want like a softer kind of fluffy eyelash look, you're going to spend a little bit more time drawing the eyelashes. If you want like a sharper kind of look or a look without the eyelashes, it'll take you a lot less time, obviously, to draw them. All right, I... Do I need that waterline? Actually, yes, but let's redraw it. But for some reason, when I'm drawing lower lashes, I find it kind of impossible to do without the lower waterline. So let's draw that. I feel like the eye looks kind of naked without it. I can sometimes get away without doing an upper waterline, just depending on how I'm feeling that day, but lower waterline just seems like it is a requirement for me and I'm only gonna pepper in a few lower lashes okay so now I am happy with this eye and I have let's make sure actually that the lash lines are all on one shape now so now you have all that on one line you have the iris and the pupil on its own layer and then you have the upper eyelid crease on its own layer. And I'm gonna keep this formation or this setup. And again, I will explain why very shortly. So now I'm going to make sure that this upper layer is selected and then I'm gonna swipe right really quick for the other two layers and I'm gonna click on group. Now I'm gonna select the group itself and I am going to slide to the left and I'm going to click on duplicate. Now I can turn off this bottom layer for now, and I'm going to be working with just the, the lash line shapes. So I'm going to select that. I'm gonna click on the freehand selection tool, and I'm gonna select just the upper lash area. Then I'm gonna click on the arrow, and I'm gonna make sure that warp is selected. And for this, I'm going to zoom in because it can be kind of difficult to see. Now I'm going to work on lowering this upper lash to about the halfway point on the eye. This is kind of a, a guesstimate, but lower it so that the eye looks like it's about halfway closed. I'm going to keep that. I like this arch, so I'm going to keep this kind of in its own spot. And then when I'm happy with that, I will click on the arrow again to deselect, and now you can see that the iris, there's more of it that needs to be erased because it wouldn't be seen underneath the eyelid, and the eyelid, because it's on a separate layer, it stays in the same spot, which is what happens when a person actually blinks. Their eyelid doesn't move with the lashes. So I'm going to click on the iris layer, I'm going to erase what needs to not be seen right now. And then you can, sometimes you'll see that the lower lash and the upper lash are clashing in a way that like this lower lash is, like this lower lash line is up here and that's obviously not natural. But in this particular instance, we didn't have that. The, uh, the thicker eyeliner that I did is covering up some of that. So I don't have to worry about erasing that on this particular drawing. So now, I'm happy with this. I am going to go ahead and 
click on the group and then click on duplicate and once again I'm going to turn off the group that I just duplicated. I'm also going to close it just to make navigating a little bit easier. So this is going to be the closed uh, animation or the closed drawing of the eye. What I do for that instead of you can do the warp like I just did with the half closed but it does run into a lot of issues and I find it just easier to just redraw the upper lash line and this is why. So let me first delete the iris and the pupil because when the eye is closed you don't see those at all and then I'm going to be working on just the lash line and I'm going to erase the uh, the upper lash line but I'm going to keep the lower lash line because when the eye is closed it's obviously just going to follow this curve of this lower lash line so let's keep that I'm also going to keep the uh, eyelashes from the lower lash line kind of intact. And again, I will explain why in just a second. Okay, so now this does not have to be perfect for the shape that the eye was before you started erasing. And the reason for that is because when the eye is closed, it actually it pulls the skin and uh, muscles and things like that in a way that it doesn't look exactly the same shape as when it's open. So again, this kind of follows. Even though my style is not very realistic, it's more animated. This does follow a little bit more like the realistic version of eyes. So the blinking feels a little bit more believable. I am making this thicker because this person is wearing eyeliner but that should be good. I do want to cover the uh, full waterline though. And of course, I do need to draw in the eyelashes again. And again, you can try to do the warp or liquefy to make the eye look closed, but in my experience, that's just more work than just redrawing. And the lashes would kind of co-mingle like this, so I will leave those the way that they are. So that is the closed eye group. So now I'm going to zoom out and... Now that we have those three stages of the eye, it's time to make the other eye so that it is doing the exact same thing as this eye. So what I'm going to do is turn on that first layer again, or turn on that first group, sorry. And I'm going to merge the layers because now we have them doing exactly what we want them to do. We can uh, go ahead and merge them into one shape. So I'm going to merge down, merge down, and then and then take them out of this group. And then I can just get rid of that group. I'm gonna do the same thing with the second group. Merge down, merge down, take it out of the group and get rid of that group. And then the last group. You gotta make sure that it is visible or else it might disappear when you're merging. And then take it out of, take it out of the group and delete. Now I'm gonna group these three um, layers that I have created. Okay, so now I have this new group and I think I'm going to have to resize because another eye is not gonna fit right there. So let me resize this just uniformly. And actually, let's, there we go. I'm gonna to go to the center portion and then I'm gonna move a little bit off to the right so that there's a little bit of a space between the eyes. And now, I'm going to duplicate that group and I'm once again going to select the arrow and then I'm going to flip horizontal and then I have to move this so that it is the same on the same line as the eye I just made. You'll know that that is the case when you see these three blue lines that means it's lining up with that over on this side. Whoops. And then I'm happy with that I will click the arrow again. 
So now that I have this other side created, these eyes need to be all on the same layer. So what I'm going to do is select the bottom layer from group number two and move it on top of this first layer in group number one. Then I'm going to merge down. So now both of the open eyes are on the same layer. And I'm just going to copy that motion for the other two stances. And then I can get rid of this layer, this group. And now these no longer have to be in a group. And in fact, for the animation um, mechanic of Procreate, they shouldn't be in a group. So I'm going to move them all out of a group and delete. Okay, so now we know that open eyes look the same on both sides. The half closed eyes are going to look the same on both sides. And the closed eyes are going to look the same on both sides. The last thing before we can actually turn on the animation is we have to think about when the eye is open and then it goes to blink, it's halfway closed and then it's all the way closed. And then from the all the way closed position, we want it to slowly open up again, not just snap open. So I'm going to duplicate the half open layer and I'm going to move it to the top of the closed layer. I'm also going to duplicate the open layer, the open eyes layer and move it to the very top of the list. So we will have open, half closed, closed, half closed, open. Now I can finally go over to the wrench and click on, we're gonna wanna click on canvas and click on animation assist and turn that on. Now I'm gonna go to this very first layer in the lineup and if you click on settings for the animation, you wanna click on loop and the eyes will open and close in, a, in an endless loop. Now for a smooth animation, you're gonna want somewhere between 10 and 15 frames per second. I have a feeling that because we have so few frames or so few layers in our animation, 15 might be a little bit too fast, but I will play to make sure. Okay, so it is a tiny bit fast for me. So I'm gonna, whoops, I'm not gonna put it to 57, I'm gonna put it to 10. Okay, and then we'll play it again. And there you have a blinking animation. I'll show you what it looks like if you lower it anyway, anything below 10. If you want a slow blink animation, <laughs> that will work as well. I'm gonna put it back up to where I want it. Okay, so now when you want it to stop, you can just hit the pause. And when you're ready to export it, you can click on the wrench icon, click on share, and you can click on animated GIF, PNG, MP4, or HVEC, just depending on what you need to use it for. I typically use either GIF or MP4, but again, it really just depends on how you're going to be using the end animation. So that's it for this tutorial, and if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and I will see you next time. Thank you.